Hey everybody, welcome to or welcome back to Ogre Speed Shop. And in case you haven't noticed, it's a little cold this morning. Today it's uh, 33 degrees here in Western Oklahoma. And for all of those who know me and know me well, if you look right there, I'm actually wearing pants. <laughs> I never wear pants. So that gives you an idea of how cold it is. But today I'm gonna to start an episode of or a video on making this right here. It's uh, for shrinking and stretching metal. And yeah, so that's what this video is gonna be about, me building one of these little stands. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so these are what I was gonna be starting with. These I got from Harbor Freight, and I've used them to do the uh, some of the trim panel pieces on the back of the Firebird. These pieces right here, all the way along here, I use these four, but I had it set up a different way. And it's kind of a pain in the butt using your hands, using one hand to pull this handle down and keep it running through here. So I'm gonna put on a stand to where I can use both, both hands and my feet to actually work the machine. So this is what we're starting with and we'll get into it here in a second. First and foremost, we gotta get some material, which I have over here. And what we're gonna do is make a platform for these to sit on in an, kind of an orientation like this. So there's enough room in between and to offset and to hang over on each side. So I'm gonna take some basically measurements from the way I have it set up here and see what kind of, how, how much stock we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a measurement here of what we need to set up for the metal. So basically I wanna bring a piece together this way, but I want right to the edge of that. So it looks like about maybe nine inches. Probably you can do eight inches. So I need two pieces that are eight inches long out of that one by three inch stock I have over there. So that's what we're gonna go by. And we're gonna, maybe, you know what? I should just go out to the very bottom, you know, go all the way out to the end of each one of them here. So let's go nine inches. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna do nine inches. So we're gonna cut some metal from that out of this stock right here. Stupid rag. I tied a rag around this to bring it home because it was sticking out the back of my truck. I guess they don't have that rule in Oklahoma because they don't offer it, so I just threw that on there. But, so we're gonna be using this one by three for this first section of this. So let's get to cutting. All right, so let's go get our first piece cut. I do need to get a, a table extension thing here to help hold the stuff in place, but so we said nine inches and that's about eight and three quarters. So. Two pieces, about nine inches long. Voila. Well, while we're at it, let's go ahead and clean them up on the angle grinder. In case you haven't noticed, this thing likes to wobble around. I think it's because this brush is a little bit too big for it, and it just kind of throws it around. I never had a problem before until I put this on here. I made this mistake before and I actually ended up having to get some piece of metal to remove my eye once. Alright, those are all cleaned up, ready to go. Bam. Okay, so I got those pieces cut and this is kind of what we're looking at as far as setting this up. But I am realizing now that Extending these all the way out like that probably wasn't a good idea because I'm going to be hooking the handle pull down somewhere in this area here. 
So I'll probably go ahead and cut about two inches off of this just to, you know, free up the room that I need for that. Maybe just an inch, but we'll see. So let's get on that. We'll go ahead and cut that off. All right, as you can see, I went ahead and cut an inch off the ends of both of these. So that gives me a little more room here. Still gives me enough leverage to actually press down on that. So, and this will be spring loaded. So it'll be spring, it'll spring up on its own. once I get everything figured out and uh, put on. So I took the pieces I cut off and I'm gonna use that as a spacer in between them there to make my center point. So I'm just gonna load all that together and this part will be done. And I'll start work on the stand part after that. All right, so let's go ahead and load this first part. Pressure. In case you haven't seen my other video where the pressure stopped working, it was working so. together now. So I'll go ahead and finish holding it. I also want to thank the previous owner of this house because they left these tables here. There's not one in the back here so I bring it to the garage. But yeah, these tables are real nice. I'm not sure what they use them for, but they work really great for what I'm using in here. So I'll go ahead and finish welding this. In case anybody's wondering if hardy gloves from Harbor Freight are good enough for welding, not really, they burn a little bit. up that piece I'm going to go ahead and grind it down smooth so I have a flat surface to work with and we'll go from there. Alright, let's do some grinding. Let me switch eye protection here. Get that off. Get these on. So my preferred my preferred weapon is of course a flat disc. They seem to work the best for me. And, Save you all the hassle of that next uh, grind. So, all right. So now we got that all together. Now we got to figure out how we're going to mount those on there. And the way you do that, you see there are holes at the bottom. And unfortunately, it's a metric bolt. I'm going to have to mark the right for this. So I'm going to show you how to mark that and put it on here. So that'll be next. All right, so I'm going to show you how to transfer these holes over the metal. This is going to use some blue painter's tape. Tape up the entire bottom of it. All right, take my little razor blade knife here and trim it around. square and basically need this end here to be square. Alright, so that's square now to that. Now I'm just gonna use the same knife here to go in 
And let me just turn this off to you. This is going to give you a center point on where everything's at. So I'll just take the knife and cut the holes, the mounting holes. Take the tape off. Out of the way. Transfer this right over. It tells me where my marks will be. So now I can just take the marker, fill in the hole. Bam, there you have your reference points for your holes, right there. And you flip this back over and mount it on there, it will line up perfectly. You guys will rinse and repeat for the other side and you're good to go. Okay, so we're going to center punch these holes. All the tape is on there. for the drill press. Hold on to your piece when you cut when you go on. We'll clamp it down. All right, so that's the first set of holes. You have to go bigger though. And I'll bring you back for that. Okay, so the bolts these take are actually like three eighths, right around three eighths. So they're 10 millimeters, what they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill them out to 7 16 so they have a little bit of wiggle room to put them in there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill these out to 7 16 Using a good old step bit. These are just from Harbor Freight. They're like three of them for like 10 bucks. So, I don't know, they might be up now, but they work great, and they're not a problem with them. All right, so just a real quick disclaimer, don't, don't necessarily do what I do. You can use oil for this, but, I mean, it's not very thick, so I'm not, like, going burning through a bunch of stuff. So I could use oil, but I never have a problem with these needing oil. So, on that note, if you look real close, it's kind of hard to see. I don't know if I'll be able to catch this or not. With When you're using one of those dressed up bits, you can actually chamfer it as you're cutting it, as you're drilling it, because I was doing, doing 7 16 so I go up to half inch. So the 7 16 and the half inch actually does a little chamfer on it, so it makes a nice clean hole. That takes care of the holes. All right, so I didn't have any bolts long enough to go through the entire thing, so I just drilled it. To, bigger hole in the back side. So now it's time to go ahead and bolt this piece on using these M, what are they, M10 by 1.5 by 25 mil. Ah, oh, man. It's cold to get into a little bit. Little socket. Stick that up through. In as well. I'm blocking here if you can see this. Take my tape measure or tape 
method worked pretty good. Bolt it on fully now. So now I just gotta start going down from here. So next part we're gonna talk about is building the post that goes down for the stand. So as you can see, we got to mount it on there. So step one complete. So now you just gotta figure out the rest of it. Which shouldn't be too hard. I apologize for the wind right now if you it's coming through here. But one nice thing about the people that used to live here, he was a driller. Mining well. And he left over a bunch of nice material around here for me. All these pipes. So I think one of these pipes right here will make a nice base. So yeah, I got plenty of material here to choose from. Like I said, you got to good amount of piping here so just gotta choose which piece I want to use still think about this piece right here it's a nice big piece and it should be sturdy so I'll let you know what I choose what I decide on all right so I went ahead and uh, cut the pieces for the base of the frame for the sh shrinker sh shrinker stretcher machine here so I just got to weld it together now. Then I got to measure to see, I'm, I'm gonna make it about, I want this area right here to be about 36 inches, or the bottom of this to come 36 inches because I'm tall, I'm six foot five. So I want it to fit me for when I'm doing it and I'm gonna bend over to do it. So this is gonna be the base of it. And I just, like I said, this is what material I had laying around here. And so this is that one by three, and this is a piece of two by two that I had laying around. It's actually from my old tool cart over there that used to hold up the, the little center box before it broke. So I'm just gonna weld this together to make the base, center it, and then uh, at that point, I'll grab a piece of two and a quarter piping from the side yard from behind the shop, and I'm gonna use that for the center, for the post to hold it up. And I think it should be plenty strong enough. It's like inch and a quarter or a quarter inch thick diameter or quarter wall or yeah, I'd say three sixteenths wall maybe. So, yep. So that'd be the center post. If it can fall over, put it over here. All right, so that's where we're at with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this. And then when I get done with that, I will be back. All right, so I got that base welded together now. And I definitely need to get some better squares because I don't think it's all that square, but it's really not that necessary. But I do like things to be a little bit more square, but this metal that I got here in Oklahoma just doesn't seem very good. But whatever, it's only 120 wall, so not even 120 wall, I'm sorry. 90 wall on that, and this is 120 wall, I think. But it'll be good enough for what I'm using it for. And so, yeah, so the base is done. I just gotta make the stanchion that goes up to the top and then uh, put it all together. And then it'd be just the rods to that point. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, so now you can kind of get an idea more of where it's going. So this is the way it's gonna be. And like I said, there's gonna be a stanchion comes down here and a pedal over here to run this one. And the same thing over here, you know, I'll show you, get, I'll get to all that when I get to that part. But I just wanted to show you the base and the middle piece, the, the stanchion. And then what it's going to kind of look like in the end. It's going to have a few more pieces attached to it other than that. But yeah, that's where we're at. It's getting there. All right, well, I got the base mounted to the up right now. So now I got to do is put that piece on there and make sure it's square and as best I can with what I have and then go from there. And yeah, so we're getting there. Well, I don't know if I'm tired or what, but I welded it on upside down. 
Yep. Man, and that's fully welded too. So yep, time to cut it off and start all over again. But I like to show my mistakes too, so always check twice before you fully weld something on. Right, round two, got that off. Got that cut back down. Let's gotta put the marks on the this time. Center right there. Get that cleaned up so I can weld it. Yeah. Do it all over again. All right. Now that's bad. But back to the way it's supposed to. And all welded up. The only thing is I lost a little height on it. Not much. So instead of being up here by, you know, here, it's just a little bit further down. So yeah, I lost maybe, what did I lose? <laughs> that much. So we'll call it quarter inch at the most. So, all right, so that part's done. Now I just gotta do the pedal system. But it's one step closer. All right, so there you have it. Again, there's that much done. So like I said, the pedal's gonna be coming on this side where you actually press down, it's gonna pull it down on this side. And I'll show you how I do all that. So you'll be actually working on this side of it. And you gotta use both hands, using your foot instead. And I'll get to that when I, on the next step. But that's what it's gonna look like. So we're getting closer to getting this thing done. All right, so I've completed the next step on making this contraption here. And that was the pedal assemblies. So this is just part of it here. Let me so, so this is gonna go down here like this. So it'll attach somewhere around that area. There's gonna be a rod that comes up from this point up to here. So when you step on this, it pulls it down. And I'll spray, be spring loaded. It'll make a lot more sense once it's all together. But it's been a long day and I'm gonna call it a night. Cause it's 36, it's 36 degrees outside right now. But yep, it's coming along. So that's gonna be the pedal assembly for one of them. And then there's the other one. And I'll put all the dimensions and everything at the very end of the, the video too. So if you wanna make something like this, you can. All right, so I got a whole new day here. And it was 20, five degrees this morning. So I waited till about nine o'clock to actually come out to the shop. I mean, it's warmed up a little bit to about 45. So starting out today, we're gonna be putting the pedal assemblies on this thing. And I figure, I think I factored about six inches up to give the best pedal travel. And we'll see how that goes. So I'm just gonna tack it in for now and see. But so that's about where we're gonna go, about six inches up. And so I'm gonna tack that on there so we can start figuring out where these pedals need to go. And I'll be back after it's tacked on. All right, so I got the first one tacked on. I'm gonna put it on the ground and check the pedal height and see if we'll get enough travel that way. And I'll show you all that when we get down to it. It'll be a little bit easier to see. So I kind of have it to where you can see it now. So if you look, it's got a string attaching the two. But if you notice, as you so let the pedal down, so we'll be pushing the pedal down. You can't see nothing. See how the handle goes down? And then it does pinch those in there, so. So at that level right there, as you press down on that pedal down there, that's gonna squeeze those down. So I just need to make a rod that attaches this. If you notice, I had to cut that out a little bit. I'll fill it in and make it look a little nicer at some point, but for now, that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna have to get a measurement. So basically, that point right there, where it's fully open, can you open a little bit more, but I just figure I'll go for the little top of that edge right there. So right about there, to down to there and get a measurement. So I know how long to make the rod. You can see I drilled a hole in that, the original handle. I'm gonna hold down there so I can put a rod and make it a, maybe a screw adjustable rod on there. So, yeah, so that's where we're at with that. So it's gonna get a rod and some turnbuckles and whatnot on there and should be good to go. 
don't know about turnbuckles, but you know what I'm talking about, the uh, rod ends that screw in, kind of like a adjustable brake lever. You know what, I might have some of those. So have to check around for that, but that's where we're at. All right, so what I found to make this work now, is this is a scrap piece I cut off of these edges here. Hopefully you can see that. So I made a little, just a, I don't know what you want to call it, a little bracket. And it attaches some rebar that I found around the, the property here, around my homestead. And so basically what this does now, it's gonna to attach to here. That bolt's on. I just cut the other piece, so I'm gonna show you that separately, but it's still kind of warm. There's a cooler one. So I drilled a hole in that one, so basically that rebar can go into that. I uh, can't see that, but that's going to go that, with that hole there. So the rebar goes in there. I'll weld it in there, just cut it to length first, and that'll attach these two to, together. So that's where I'm at right now. Just got to attach these, get them to length, and we'll be pretty close to being done with this thing. I can finish welding everything. Now we're to the point where we have made the connection from the pedal up to the actual uh, shrinker or stretcher. And I was going to put it on. I'm going to show you how this all works. Don't mind my hair. I woke up and put a watch cap on this morning because it was cold. basically the gist of it and at this point I'm just going to go ahead and finish it up and next time you see it it'll be complete. All right real quick I just want to demonstrate how it's going to work. I don't have a spring on there yet but so basically you know with your foot you're going to come in here and push down on it and it'll spring back. the shrinker side of it so it'll allow you to shrink the metal to make curves like that and I'll show you more examples of this once I get everything finished of how these all work but that was the only piece of sheet metal so I ain't real sheet metal it's pretty thin but just to give you an idea of what it looks like and how it works and so yeah that's where we're at I keep saying that but that's it all right so I've got it all together now and you can see how it's a little bit off. I gotta do some adjustments on it, but the springs are on it now. So they actually spring up now. And it can work out. There's the duck again. Say hi, Robin. Hello. Okay, so like I was saying, so it's all back, it's all together now. And the pedals work, they got spring loaded now. So we can work our metal and we can shrink it and stretch it using our both our hands and now our foot. So that's pretty much gonna complete it now. I still got some cleanup to do on it and some modifications, a few little modifications. But I just wanted to get, give you all an idea of what it looked like and how easy it is to make. Like I said, I made this all out of just the material laying around the shop and behind the shop and left over from the old homeowner. So it worked out good and that's it. All right, this concludes my video on a shrinker stretcher machine. 
And like I said, just a, just a little machine that helps you free up your hands in order to work some metal. There's still some tweaks I need to do too. I'm gonna clean it up, paint it, make it look a little better, make it work a little better. But I just wanna get this video out to you so you can see what it is. And basically it's I mean, everything I made, <laughs> everything I use, I found laying around the shop or even in my backyard or behind the shed here or the shop. So it's definitely something that anybody can do if you have a welder and some time. So it didn't take much to do, and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did enjoy it, go ahead and leave a like down there. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And leave me a comment. Let me know what I can do better or how I can, or any other, other things you'd like to see. And I am enjoying my hair this way right now. This is from a watch cap from a cold morning. So, you know, I know Bri is going to make a comment about it. So I just want to make sure I put it out there. I'm doing some work today. So that's why it's like that. So again, I appreciate you watching. And until next time.